I'm here with Alexander Merkurs, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Alexander, let's take a look at what's going on in Ukraine and the impeachment inquiry hoax. And uh, the story is getting very confusing, very sinister, I think is, is, is the right word to, to use to describe what's going on with this Trump Zelensky. What started out as a Trump Zelensky phone call is, and has now blown up into secret trials and uh, Adam Schiff kind of, you know, declaring himself the uh, de facto uh, judge, jury, <laughs> and executioner. At least that's, that's the way I, I look at it. But, you know, the, the more I read the stories that are coming out that are being, you know, leaked to the press as to what's going on in Ukraine, you know, the more I come to the conclusion that Biden and the Obama administration, they were up to their ears in corruption in Ukraine. I mean, Biden's name always shows up in every single meeting that took place in Ukraine, every, every single, you know, uh, story that's leaked somehow has a Biden somewhere in there. And there's no doubt that they were they were very active, the Obama administration, very active in what was going on in Ukraine. And that's not a good thing. But uh, before this video, you said that the secrecy that's taking place as they conduct this uh, this impeachment inquiry, hoax, hoax trial, show trial, is really... Uh, terrible for for the united states terrible for for getting to the truth and for trying to at least get some sort of understanding as to the dynamics of what's going on here so alexander get into the recent updates going on in ukraine and the uh, impeachment inquiry Let, let's start with the so-called impeachment inquiry i i, I say impeachment so-called because of course the house of representatives has not yet voted to set up an impeachment inquiry. I mean, the only person who's made that decision is Nancy Pelosi, who is the Speaker of the House of Representatives. She has decided that there is a, a impeachment inquiry underway and has designate, designated certain committees as conducted it, conducting it and has, in effect, appointed Adam Schiff, head of the House Intelligence Committee, as a de facto grand inquisitor to actually conduct this uh, so-called inquiry. Now, let, let's, let's take a step back, because um, what is actually happening, and I think this is an important point which I would make, I don't think this is confusing, as you said. I think this is sinister, which is what you said. What is happening is this. This inqu inquiry, this this discussion of whether the president of the United States should be impeached is apparently all taking place inside a basement room. Um, Adam Schiff summons various witnesses. He basically decides who these witnesses are going to be. The Republicans apparently, according to the procedure that has been decided, are not allowed to summon their own witnesses. So he decides who these, these uh, witnesses are going to be. He asks them questions. A very small number of Republicans who are members of these various committees, but who are, let us always remember, outnumbered by Democrats, are there. Um, but they're not apparently allowed to discuss what they see and hear um, with the public, or perhaps even, as I understand it, with other Republican members of Congress. Um, so what actually is going on is that um, Schiff calls in witnesses. These witnesses prepare um, a written statement, which one suspects in several cases has been fairly carefully manipulated. Then we get a drip feed of what these witnesses are supposed to have said, but we have actually no real knowledge of what they said, because it is supposed to be all secret. Now, nothing that has happened up to now justifies this sort of secrecy. There is no, apparently, apparently there is no classified material that has come forward or been put forward in this investigation up to now. It's not clear that this kind of secrecy would any way be necessary. If there were classified information, you can always redact it. You, there are always ways of conducting uh, um, um, inquiries 
or, or meeting with witnesses in private for some parts of their testimony, but making other parts of that testimony public. So this is being a this is a very staged, very manipulated process, which frankly completely violates any concept of due process, which I know. And it culminated in this extraordinary incident where apparently 40 Republican uh, representatives crashed into this meeting whilst this so-called questions are taking place. Adam Schiff was apparently very upset and annoyed. And apparently those 40 members of Congress, members of Congress, elected representatives of the United States are apparently being threatened with ethics violations. Now, this seems to me so wrong at so many levels that one has to beg the question of whether any kind of legal process that, because this is a quasi legal process that is conducted in this kind, in this sort of way, can ever have any kind of proper uh, legally justifiable outcome. And remember, impeachment is a form of trial. Now, my conclusion, the Democrats realize that Donald Trump is not going to be impeached. The Senate is never going to accept this. Um, what they're doing is not actually conducting a real impeachment investigation. They're simply using the language of impeachment and the appearance of all these hearings as a means to damage him politically and to give the American people the idea that something very bad and very wrong is actually taking place. Because there is nothing that can possibly justify this sort of behavior if a real investigation was taking place. Now, I'm going to speak very briefly about what little we know about Bill Taylor, who was this US diplomat in Ukraine, um, about whom a lot of people are saying, you know, that he provided the smoking gun. From very, li very little that we've been able to decipher about this, firstly, he did not provide any smoking gun. Uh, secondly, most of what he seems to have provided, he seems to have obtained himself at second and third and fourth hand. Thirdly, thirdly, I am quite sure that he is someone who was in some way involved in the whistleblower complaint, which allegedly started all this thing. Remember the whistleblower? We don't hear much of him by him anymore. That's because it's Adam Schiff. Well, indeed. Or there is no whistleblower. We said it here well, first. There is well, no whistleblower. It's well, made indeed. up. Well, indeed. Well, indeed. Well, indeed. And remember something else. Do you remember that it was all going to be about this telephone conversation that Donald Trump and Zelensky supposedly had with each other? It's absolutely clear to me that the Democrats are shifting away from the focus on that conversation. They're shifting increasingly to the sort of things that Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani, is supposed to have been doing. And there's now attempts to try and claim that the real problem was not this actual telephone conversation that this so-called whistleblower originally complained about. It was an earlier conversation which Donald Trump and Zelensky are supposed to have had way back in July, you know, a whole month earlier. So you see how the goalposts are shifting and they're able to shift the goalposts in this way because of the extraordinary secrecy in which this whole so-called investigation is being conducted. My own personal view about it is that this is not going to cut, uh, uh, cut through. Um, um, some in initial opinion polls, and I, I said I expected this to happen, initially got excited, people got excited about it. They thought that there was something, you know, really big and important going to happen. I think the longer this thing goes on in the way in which it is going, the less interest people are going to have in the impeachment investigation itself. And the more interested they're going to become in the so-called subject area of this of this of this matter, which is one, 
what the Bidens were doing in Ukraine, two, what other people were doing in Ukraine, and three, what was going on with Ukraine and the 2016 election. So I think that the Democrats are playing an overcomplicated game and ultimately one that's going to fail for them. They, they, they've taken away the wrong lesson from Russiagate. They, they went through the formalities in Russiagate of having open hearings. Of course, the Republicans were in control of the House and of the committees for most of Russiagate. So there were open hearings in Russiagate and there was a special counsel investigation. And in the end, that came up with nothing. So this time, when they know they have nothing, they're trying to control it by doing it in an entirely different way, very quietly and very secretly. But in the end, this is going to work against them, I predict, even more. Yeah, I agree with that assessment, Alexander. I mean, God, I don't even know where to begin. Let's, let's stay on, on William Taylor first. Yeah. I was watching, I think it was Hannity. Yeah. I think it was either Hannity or, or Laura Ingram. Anyway, they, they had Tom Finton from Judicial Watch. Yeah. And he said a statement which really stuck with me when he was discussing the, the Taylor testimony. Yeah. Yeah. He said the State Department, the U.S. State Department, has been known for decades to be infested with deep state, Democrat-leaning uh, staff especially when you're looking at the ambassadors and, and people at those levels. What do you make of that? Because we know that so far, everyone they brought in that is related to Ukraine, that served in Ukraine in one form or another, has deep, intimate connections with Biden, with Obama, with the DNC, etc. So, I mean, I don't see how you can have a credible witness there to begin with, or at least not cross-examine that um, person and their well, motivation. When I think of a murder trial, I always think, what's the motivation? Yes. Well, well, let's first of all deal with the question of political bias within the State Department. In fact, we can actually prove that. There is actually a public event, everybody forgets about it, but which actually confirms what you said. It happened during the 2016 election when various middle-ranking officers in the State Department published a statement, they made it public, these are actually serving State Department officials, which was quite obviously intended to help Hillary Clinton. I remember it at the time, I was stunned by it. I think we wrote about it at the time for the Duran. It was basically a call for the United States to take a stronger line in Syria against Russia and the Assad government than the Obama ad ad administration was taking, than Donald Trump was saying he was going to take. But it was exactly that kind of very hard line that everybody knew Hillary Clinton was promising. It was a open call by people within the State Department to support Hillary Clinton. So there you have it. You want, you want proof of what was said, you know, on Hannity or Laura Ingram, I didn't watch this program. You have it there. It was cut and dried. It was, in fact, so blatant, so open, that I remember being absolutely incredulous about it and really astonished that Barack Obama, who was then the president, was uh, uh, took it so lightly. Now, um, as to uh, um, Bill Taylor and his, and his evidence, firstly, what I've heard about this evidence, I don't find it, frankly, amounts to very much. Anyway, I mean, can I just make a point about this? Nobody, nobody has been able to say what crime Donald Trump is supposed to have committed. He had some conversations with Zelensky. Rudy Giuliani did some kind of inquiries in Ukraine. Where is the crime here? You know, where's the beef? What exactly is it that people are so concerned about? They the say, quid pro quo. That's, that's well, right, the whole, right. they're all stuck on that. The, yeah. the, they're, all, they're all stuck on that. Uh, we've discussed how the fact is that quid pro quos happen all the time. But I come back to, to this. The quid pro quo ultimately 
was about getting Ukraine's help with the Barr Durham investigation into the origins of Russiagate. The whole question of the Bidens arose out of that because previously the Bidens, or Joe Biden at least, acted in a way that the, attorney, the former Attorney General of Ukraine, Viktor Shokin, says was intended to obstruct an investigation into Burisma Holdings, which is the company of which Joe Biden's son was a director. Now, that's a perfectly valid concern, it seems to me, for the President of the United States to have. He wants to be absolutely sure that if Barr and Durham are going to carry out an investigation in Ukraine over matters that are important in relation to the 2016 election and the origins of Russiagate, people like Biden and other Democrats are not going to be able to pull strings in the way that Joe Biden did. He did pull strings in 2000. Uh, in 2014 or, 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 or and 15, in order to prevent the investigation into Burisma Holdings. Perfectly legitimate, perfectly appropriate discussion. So, again, I come back to this question. Where's the crime? Where is the impropriety? I, it, it, it seems to me that if there is any impropriety here, it is in the fact that the Democrats seem to be acting through this bogus impeachment investigation in a way that is intended to obstruct the Bar Durham investigation into events in Ukraine from proceeding. And that is very serious because we need to know about the origins of Russiagate. There is a proper investigation going on there. And of course, if the Democrats are covering up all sorts of other things in Ukraine, which, by the way, I suspect they are, that is also a very serious matter. And conducting an impeachment investigation in order to carry out that cover-up, obstruction, if you like to use that word, that is a much more serious abuse of office and power than anything that Donald Trump is accused of. All right, Alexander, let's stay on uh, William Taylor for just a no. little bit more. And let's bring another name into this. And that's Am Amos Hochstein. Hochstein. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Anyway, so now you have the Associated Press, I believe it was the New York Times or the Washington Post. Anyway, one in the same, all the same, you know, pieces of garbage. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so so the AP and uh, I'll say the New York Times in this case, the, the New York Times, they come out with this report saying that this Hochstein guy, Hochstein Hochstein, has the evidence to corroborate William Taylor's testimony, yeah. i.e. that Zelensky was feeling pressured and that yeah. Trump was, you know, committing this quid pro quo and, you know, investigate Biden or I won't give you weapons so you can kill your own people. You know, yeah. this, this is the yeah. whole weapons to go to war. Everyone's pissed off that, yes. you know, Trump yes. wasn't giving him weapons so that, you know, Zelensky can continue, continue the war and kill his fellow citizens. But anyway, yeah. aside from that point, so you have this Hochstein guy. And let me read you what his job was in Ukraine. He mm. was an American supervisory board member of Ukrainian natural gas company Naftogas and a former Obama administration energy diplomat with ties to the Bidens. So why is he important? The AP is claiming that this is the guy that was actually consulting with Kiev in order to help Zelensky navigate, you know, the, the whole Russiagate uh, inquiry that was going on and how to not get involved in all of that, and also helping the Ukraine government, you know, navigate the, the Hunter Biden Burisma yes. investigation. On yes. the flip side, he was also consulting with Biden as well as to how to navigate Ukraine, especially with regards to Hunter Biden and his relationship with Burisma. 
Yeah. Alexander, what do you make of this newest so character have, who's been okay. thrown into the into the Ukraine mix? Yes, well, I think before we actually start with him, let's just make a, a very quick point about the uh, this constant claim that Trump stopped the arms in order to get Ukraine to undertake the investigation. Uh, the arms were eventually provided, and Ukraine never announced an investigation. I mean, that makes the whole theory that there was some kind of pressure, uh, uh, it seems to me, collapse. Because at the end of the day, if there was pressure applied, it didn't work and it wasn't pursued. I mean, th th this whole thing, again, we are entering into territory. We're entering into discussions about something that was supposed to have happened or might have happened. But actually, when you actually analyze it, in fact, nothing happened. Um, there was a delay of a few weeks, but it didn't result in any Ukrainian investigation. Kurt Volker, who is a, a US ambassador, a special envoy to Ukraine, a much more serious uh, senior official than this particular uh, 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 witness or alleged witness, has contradicted that story. He said that the Ukrainians were never felt themselves under pressure, that he had numerous dealings with them. They never spoke to him about feeling under pressure, and they didn't know about the fact that these arms were being held up. And I would add, by the way, that there's absolutely nothing about it in the telephone call between Zelensky and Trump, which is which would be surprising if there really was an attempt to force the Ukrainians to take any kind of step. Arms that Obama go. refused to provide. By the Arms way. which Obama, as you rightly say, also refused to provide. Now, let's, however, get to this particular witness. Firstly, I question whether, given the particular positions that he had, this person could have been had any conceivable direct knowledge of what was going on between the uh, Donald Trump and Zelensky. Can, can you explain real quick, Alexander, before you go further, a little bit, just like a minute about NAFTA gas and why it's important? Yeah, yeah, NAFTA Because he was on the right. board of it. He was on the board of NAFTA, NAFTA gas. NAFTA gas is Ukraine's uh, uh, um, publicly owned, state owned natural gas uh, company. It's, it's actually the monopoly export company uh, um, in Ukraine. Nafta gas is the, com is the company that extracts natural gas in Ukraine. Ukraine does have some natural gas of its own, but primarily, and the reason it's been so geopolitically important, is it imports gas from Russia. Some of it is supplied to Ukraine, some of which is transported through NAFTA gas's pipelines to Europe. It has been a critically important part of the geopolitical battle between the West and Russia, because the Russians have always been concerned about the fact that Ukraine is a transit state, as it's called. In other words, Russia's natural gas, up to very recently, has had to travel through Ukraine to reach Russia's customers in, its, in, in, the, in, in, in Europe. The pipelines it travels through are NAFTA gas's pipelines, and NAFTA gas has in the past siphoned off Russian gas intended for other customers in order to keep Ukraine supplied with gas. Ukraine also, NAFTA gas, when you hear about the gas wars between Ukraine and Russia, when the Ukrainians and the Russians argue about prices, for example, it's always in the end, in reality, a legal battle or a contractual battle between NAFTA gas, which is Ukraine's natural gas company, and Gazprom, which is Russia's much bigger natural gas company. So the fact, by the way, that there is an important American official involved in NAFTA gas is extremely interesting. <laughs> it's very interesting. <laughs> I mean, connected it, 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 to Biden, it, it, by the way, just connected, kind of coincidence. Connect, connected to Biden, and you know uh, who, who's whose uh, son Hunter Biden, <laughs> Biden 
some remarkable coincidence, is also a director of a company that is also supposed to be involved in natural gas questions. But, you know, the, the, these, these coincidences no are, 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 are... No one talks about this. So this person, I mean, one does wonder what his precise role in natural gas was. Well, actually, one doesn't have to wonder very much because I think it's obvious. It suggests very much to me that especially after the 2014 Maidan coup, uh, NAFTA gas has very largely been run by uh, 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 people like this. But I, I, I have to say, I question whether this person can, in fact, be party to any direct discussions between Trump and Zelensky. So almost certainly the information he's providing, he is providing at second or third or fourth hand. So we're having hearsay information being used to corroborate other hearsay information. Bill Taylor's information appears to be hearsay. This person's information appears to be hearsay. So, you know, do you really use hearsay to corroborate hearsay? That seems to me simply to be multiplying gossip, actually. If it is Schiff even gossip. Well, Schiff is doing it. Yeah, Schiff, Schiff, is actually, it. Schiff is actually doing it. But the other thing is, of course, that this person, presumably, in fact, unquestionably, has an interest in this. <laughs> because we've talked about the fact that he's been placed in after gas and he seems to have some big role in after gas. We've talked about the enormous geopolitical importance of NAFTA gas and how this man is right at the cutting edge of this. His concern must be, and the concern of many people in Washington must be, the sort of deep state people, the people who backed the Maidan so-called revolution in 2014, who've been trying to draw Russia, uh, Ukraine away from Russia, who've been trying to engage in all the gas wars, in all the gas politics between Russia and Ukraine, who want to keep Ukraine as a transit state because they, they want to stop the Russians from sending their gas to Europe via Nord Stream, to Germany, and Turk Stream, to Turkey. And they want to keep Ukraine and NAFTA gas as the key transit, because that's their way of controlling Russia's ability to send gas. These people, of whom this so-called witness must be one, are obviously very worried about a potential rapprochement between Zelensky and Russia. And they must also be very worried about any kind of investigations into Ukraine and into Ukraine's role in the 2016 election, which might compromise or affect what they are doing, what the whole sort of great game that they've been playing in Ukraine is intended to achieve. Bill Taylor is clearly such a person this other witness is clearly such another person. The CIA official, who is the supposed wit 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 whistleblower, if he exists, is another <laughs> such person, if he exists. So, you know, we are not looking at people who are disinterested, you know, state servants who just come forward in order to, you know, expose some sort of improper conduct by the president of the United States. As I said, I haven't seen actually any improper conduct, but you know, that's all what they're about. It's like the same people in Syria who are objecting to Donald Trump's withdrawal policy there and have been doing everything they possibly can to obstruct it. This is exactly what we are seeing in Ukraine. We're seeing certain deep state officials who obviously are unhappy about the direction of events in Ukraine, trying to obstruct those uh, 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 those changes. We also see them getting into league with the Democrats, who it seems to me both have a wish to stop Donald Trump and at the same time are almost certainly very concerned about what some of them, you know, like possibly Joe Biden in Ukraine, were doing. And, of course, we have the media who are cheer cheering this whole thing along. So that's what we need to understand 
It's the same people, the same sort of people who have been obstructing Donald Trump's Syria policy, who are meddling and trying to interfere in what he's been doing in Ukraine. Yeah, absolutely. Because in the Syria policy, you have the military industrial complex and there's a lot of money in war and in weapon sales and arms sales and arms uh, dealing and, and yeah. gun running and all that stuff that they were involved in. And in yeah. Ukraine, you have there is a military industrial complex component there, of course. But there's also a very big, like you explained, a very big energy and natural gas component. And Obama's eight years, he played along in the game and everyone continued yeah. to continue to get richer. And here comes Trump. And what's Trump doing? He's spoiling the game. He's ruining the game. And everyone's furious because they're going to lose a lot of money now that Trump has come in. And he doesn't want to play by the rules of Obama and Bush and Clinton and all these guys. That's exactly right. Can I just yeah. add, by the way, before, before we forget that there is also a very important energy component in the Syrian of conflict. I mean, there True. were all kinds of plans to build pipelines True. across Syria. And of course, they're still trying to cling on to uh, Syria's oil fields in the east of Syria, which I very much doubt is going to happen. So it, it's lots of things. There's corruption. There's, an, there's, there's a genuine question of corruption. And I think anybody who cares about these things ought to investigate it. If, if Paul Manafort was going to be investigated, other people should be also. It's not fair or proper that only Republicans should be investigated for corruption in Ukraine and not Democrats. That's one thing. There's also a geopolitical play and Russia seems to be a target in Ukraine as in a sense it was in Syria also. And of course there is also uh, 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 um, energy politics and uh, um, all sorts of plans and ideas about keeping Europe um, under sort of American energy, you know, keeping American energy control of Europe. So, you know, there's all the all these different plays. And as you rightly say, who, here comes a, here comes Donald Trump, who doesn't believe in regime change, doesn't believe in interfering in other countries, thinks the United States should be looking after itself, seems to have a deeply, uh, um, you know, deep misgivings about the corrupt activities of other people in all of these countries. I, I come back to a point which we made, by the way, on an earlier program. Lots of allegations of corruption made constantly against Trump, no evidence of it. Uh, really remarkable that all those investigations into Donald Trump didn't find anything. So here, here he comes along, Donald Trump comes along, uh, and skeptic about what all the things these people are doing. He's spoiled their game in Syria. They're frightened that he's going to do the same in Ukraine, as well as exposing all the sort of things that they were doing. So in, is it surprising that they're pushing back? Uh, 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 so you know, let's not take these witnesses too seriously. Let's also remember, by the way, something else about Russiagate. Every couple of weeks, I remember in Russiagate, somebody would come along and say there's been some tremendous bombshell, some great revelation, some new story that proves how, you know, all the collusion allegations between the Trump campaign and the Russians were all true. And then, of course, when you actually looked at the evidence itself, there was nothing there. And of course, all the secrecy in which this investigation is being conducted, which we talked about at the beginning of this program, is to prevent us seeing the evidence. So as to conceal the fact that almost certainly these bombshells that we're hearing now, there is again nothing there. That's the part that worries me, Alexander, is all this secrecy. Not, not from the fact that it's coming from a, from a buffoon and an idiot like Adam Schiff. But, you know, I, I want to take a bigger picture look at it in yes. a way. And then, I was, and then I want to get back to your point about, you know, trying to discredit Trump here. Not really concerned so much about removing Trump, but damaging him. So looking at Schiff and what he's doing with this secret trial, which is really a secret trial. I mean, there's, yeah. there's yes. no other way to describe it. No. You have the secret trial going on in the basement of, of, of Congress being run by this buffoon Schiff. Yes. A, a man who's, who actually we've proven in videos 
has very deep ties to Ukraine as well. <laughs> Let's yes. not forget that. No one mentions that. But no. anyway, he's doing the secret trial. In the last three to four years, you've had, you know, stories like Russiagate, which turned out to be a complete hoax. Mm -hmm. And we won't get into all the lies being told there yes. in Russiagate from the Steele dossier to FISA, secret FISA, you know, trials and, and warrants being given out to spy yes. on Americans like Carter Page, you know, um, Roger Stone and, and 12 FBI agents raiding his house. You have what's going on with Assange which we did a video on this the other day and what's going on there, which is just absolutely disgusting. Yeah. What's going on with Assange. You have Epstein and what happened there. And at the end of the day, we didn't find out anything. The story yeah. just disappeared. We don't know what the yeah. hell went on. No. This is damaging the United States to a point of no return. And now, Alexander, just to tie it up and to get you to wrap up this video, and now all of a sudden you have what's obvious, and I think you've made a great point, they're trying to discredit Trump. They've got an election coming up anyway. They mm. don't care if Biden ends up being collateral damage. And you have now, you mentioned her name during the, the program, Hillary Clinton considering another run. So they're damaging Trump, they're discrediting Trump, they're, they're, they're destroying Biden, collateral damage. They've got all this secrecy, you know, all, 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 this, all this stuff that just makes your skin crawl. And yeah. who better <laughs> to put in as a Democrat candidate than the person that, that can, that, that's the definition of making your skin crawl, Hillary Clinton? Well, indeed, if they do that, then I have to say, I, I, I think that would be an absolutely uh, a mad decision by the Democrats. But I, I, clearly, she still has her devoted admirers. If she if she enters the game, enters the election, and wins in 2020 as a result of all of this, then frankly, I, I, I would say that the United States is no longer a republic any longer. I mean, it's, it, it, it would have become, in effect, a national security state. Because you're absolutely right to say that this investigation that's been conducted has basically thrown away any concept of due process. I'm going to add two other cases, by the way, to the list that you gave. One is Michael Flynn. Michael Flynn had to sell his house. He's a serving general. He was a serving general of the United States, highly decorated. He, he, he fought for the United States on the field of battle. His reputation was trashed. He was forced to sell his house, and he was convicted of a feeble um, um, charge of lying to the FBI in what is now universally known to have been a setup. So he was abominably treated. George Papadopoulos, another person who should never have been charged, in my opinion, uh, uh, lots going on with him. No doubt we'll be learning more about him from Horowitz. I'm going to mention a third person, Brett Kavanaugh, Supreme Court Justice. He was going to be made a Supreme Court justice. He had all these stories spread about him, all these extraordinary stories that he had assaulted women in the past, in the remote past. The burden of uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, presumption of innocence was thrown out of the window. We were told that it no longer applied to him anymore. Uh, um, he was expected to prove his innocence of what something that happened, was it 30 years before? And uh, uh, he's family, as we know, his wife especially, was caused enormous distress. The United States has politicized its justice system to an extraordinary degree. Due process, concepts of due process are disintegrating. You cannot have a democracy where there is politicized justice and where due process no longer applies. The people who created the United States, people often forget this, the founders, the founding fathers, many of them were lawyers. Thomas Jefferson, who didn't, by the way, draft the US Constitution, many people think he did, but he wasn't actually, I believe, one of them. But he did draft the Declaration of Independence. He was a lawyer, so was Madison, so were many of these other people. They cared tremendously about these things. So was Alexander Hamilton. They all cared tremendously about these things. I think if they looked at the state of the American Republic today, they would be appalled. 
where does where does the U.S. go from from this? I mean, we rattled off just things that have happened in the last three four years that are, I mean, these hap these these things happened in the U.S. I mean, you sit there and you say, well, Geez. I, 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 I wouldn't once have believed it. I mean, I'm old enough to remember Watergate. And I have to say something. I mean, I know a lot of people uh, 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 question the motivations behind Watergate. But there was no doubt at all that serious crimes were committed. And that investigation was conducted in an incredibly proper way. Due process was definitely followed over the course of it. I look, I, I watch Russiagate. I watch Ukraine Gate. I look at what's happened to Chelsea Manning, who is in prison, apparently indefinitely, and is being fined because she's not prepared to talk to talk against uh, 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 Julian Assange. I see what's been happening to Julian Assange. I worry about what's happened to Michael Flynn and George Papadopoulos. I see the way in which a prospective candidate for the Supreme Court, Brett Kavanaugh, was treated. And I say this, I'm not an American myself, but if Americans value their democracy, then they need to use their vote very carefully come the 2020 election, because they still have the right, as I speak now, to elect their Congress and their president, but they need to use that, those votes to make sure that these growing threats to the American democratic system are defeated and pushed back. There's still time to do it, but the forces that are opposed to democracy are growing stronger. All right, we'll leave it there. Alexander, a good 42 minutes, 40, 42 minute video. Guys, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share the channel for everybody you know. SoundCloud, iTunes, get an audio copy of this video. PayPal, Patreon, subscribe star. Please donate to us so we can continue to do shows like this one, which run a good 40 minutes and we talk about a lot of subjects. And of course, Durant Shop. I'm wearing my Durant shirt. I think we may even have the same shirt, actually. I think we do, actually. <laughs> and, two, and, two, two, do we have the same mug? We do. We have the same mug. Wow. Okay. You see, two, definitely two minds think alike. This was not coordinated, people. It's just as I said that uh, on this on this day we were both thinking the same the same things, which, as you can see, we often do. And what great mugs they are! What great shirts they are! This one obviously is um, got the emblem, the uh, coat of arms of the Russian Federation, so it appears on Putin's mugs. But you know, we also like it. We think it's extremely stylish. And these are really great mugs anyway. Uh, porcelain, 15 ounces, incredibly nice to drink from. What are you drinking from at this moment, Alex? I'm drinking tea. Water. <laughs> water. I often drink water. This mug, by the way, this other mug that I also, I mean, that that I was drinking water from before. It's got the other Russian coat of arms. This is that of Moscow. And you see there's St. George, who's the patron saint of Moscow. And he's slaying the dragon which I always think of as the dragon of fake news and untruth. Not perhaps Peter, uh, um, um, Adam Schiff, but something like that. So there you go. So we also have these great shirts, incredibly comfortable, 100% cotton, beautifully made. Um, um, and we not just got shirts, not just short sleeve shirts like the ones we're both wearing now, but long sleeve shirts, polo shirts, um, V-neck shirts. We've got hoodies, we've got hats, we've got stickers. We've got books on Russiagate, by the way, two books, which we need to update because we wrote them some time ago. Yeah, we've got more books coming up. More we've books. got we'll more books coming yeah. we'll, eventually. So um, anyway, they're all there on our shop. Our, you know, our customers love our products. So help yourself, help us, help the Duran, go to our shop. Alex will tell you how to do it. Just go to the DuranShop.com. You'll find a link in the description box down below. Alexander Merkers, thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.